Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a floating menu that also scrolls. So here's my example. I've got a page here that when I scroll up and down, you know, I've got a bunch of text uh, to see a little bit more. I can scroll down to see more. Right now I have a lot of white space here, which is important for the moment because I'm going to show you how to remove the white space if you want it. But uh, for now, I have my main content uh, scrollable. And if you notice, as I do that, my left hand uh, menu section here, this blue area, is not scrolling with it. It is staying fixed. That's part of um, the floating property that we're giving it. So it just kind of stays where, you know, wherever the main content is, you're always seeing this. However, this blue section also has a scroll bar of its own. So, you know, a good use case for this is if this is acting like your, your navigation, your menu list, and you have a lot of menu items like you can see I have here, um, then scrolling up and down to see them independently um, from the page might be useful for you. So I'm gonna show you how to set this up. I'm also gonna show you, you know, if your page doesn't need to scroll the, the, the main content, um, how to keep the page collapsed so that this is completely fixed. There's no scrolling required here, but maybe your main, uh, your floating group does still need to scroll. So here's how I've set this up. Uh, first requirement to make this work is that your page has to be not fixed, okay? So if you double click anywhere on your page, you'll pull up the property editor for your page. Um, if you scroll kind of to the middle area here, you can see make this element fix width, keep that unchecked. That will kick in Bubble's responsive engine uh, so your page uh, can actually uh, react to different uh, widths uh, that the, you know, your users come in with different browser widths and they're checking it out on different devices. So uh, the page will react to that. So make sure that this is unchecked. And then the next thing is we've got our floating group here. So this element um, is what gives it that stickiness property. You know, if I move up and down, this is not going anywhere. Regardless of the scroll bar, this is always going um, to stick so that it's always visible. So here's my floating group. Um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's under the containers uh, elements list here floating group that's the element you want it acts just like a regular group um, the only difference is it has this stickiness property this floating property so to set this up at the very top here you want this group to float uh, float vertically float relative to both the top and bottom so you've got these different selections here we're going to select both um, and the height of the floating group should be the same height of your page okay even if you don't have enough content to fit inside of um, the you know even if you're going to have a lot of extra blue space here for example um, make sure that it is as tall as the page itself so you can see here the height of my group is currently 1200 and the height of my page is also 1200. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to get rid of this here for a second to show you what that does first. Okay, I'm going to refresh the page. And here's what happens. I've, the, the floating, the, the uh, scroll bar for the floating group is no longer there. Okay, so I can only scroll um, within my own page main content area here. Now this is completely fixed um, and, you know, the there's no extra room uh, below my last menu item there. And that might be an, a desired effect for some of you, but if you're watching this tutorial, I'm assuming you are looking for how to do the scroll bar. So what I had added there and I had just removed, I'm going to add it again, is a collapsing group. So I got a group element. I've added it inside of my floating group. It has to be inside. Make sure that it is also the, the, the bottom edge of that group is at the bottom edge of, of the you know parent floating group element and this group you want to collapse this element's height when hidden so check that box and uncheck the visibility property so this group is never actually going to be visible ever it's always going to be hidden so that we can enable this collapsing effect here uh, so you don't really need to worry about designing this group if you want to you know remove the background color it doesn't really matter you're never going to see it um, i'm going to keep this color here i'm actually going to make it a different color just so that we're all clear this is a separate group 
and uh, so you can see that where where it is currently. So again, doesn't matter you know whether it's centered horizontally or if it's all the way to the left. It just has to be placed with the bottom edge touching the bottom edge of the floating group. Okay. Now, how tall you make this does dictate how much scroll bar you get. Okay. That what's also important there is how much room you're giving. Um, the page height and, and the overall height of the floating group. So if your menu item ends up here and you want a scrolling bar, I would suggest giving it a little bit more height so that there is room to scroll. Okay, so if you see, if I have the group really close to menu item 12 here, I'm going to refresh the page and you're going to see that there's really not a lot of room to scroll. And obviously the important thing is you want to be able to see all of your menu items. So the scroll bar is there now, but it's not really, I, I have no room to scroll because I have collapsed nearly all of the extra height, right, with this group. So if I move it down kind of halfway there, I'm only going to be collapsing down this much height. And I'm going to have this much, this blue empty space here available to scroll. So I will refresh the page so you can see that. And here you go, you can see now my menu can scroll a bit more and I have a little bit more breathing room there. All right, so that's really, I mean, that's all it is. And you can play around with the different heights of both the floating group, the page, um, and the collapsing group to get the that sweet spot, exactly what you are looking for for your app. Um, just the things that do need to always be true are that the floating group needs to be the same height as the page, and the bottom edge of this collapsing group needs to be at the bottom edge of the floating group, okay? And this group is inside of the floating group. Now, the last thing is uh, if you, I just wanted to show you too, if you know you have something like this where you've got some content and then you have this extra white space and you wanna get rid of the white space but not affect your floating group, here's what you're gonna do. I'm gonna come back into my editor and I'm actually going to um, remove some of this text. You know, what I had here was uh, intentionally to have a lot of text. So uh, let me remove some of this so that you can see if you have a lot less content let's say about that much and you and, and specifically if your content is shorter than the height of the menu so I have a lot less going on here but my menu is still much taller than that then here's what you're going to do you're going to add another uh, collapsing group to your page um, just remember again the bottom edge has to be at the bottom edge of the the um, both bottom edges need to meet the page and the collapsing group. I'm going to give this a color as well so that we can see what we're doing here. So this purple group is going to collapse and we're going to turn off the visibility there. Just make sure that's unchecked. Okay, so now again, how much room you give it between the top edge of this group and then the bottom edge of your content is going to dictate how much extra padding you're going to have below here. So I'm going to keep it pretty tight. Because uh, I don't want my main content page to scroll at all. I only want my scrolling bar, uh, my scrolling um, blue menu here to, to scroll. So we'll do that. Yep, I think that's good. So now we'll refresh the page. Okay, so you can see what happened here. I have lost the scrolling bar on my main content because I don't need it. I don't need to scroll anymore. Um, there's just uh, uh, no need to. I have all this space here because this is this is it. This is my content, but my floating group can move up and down um, independently. All right, and you know if I did want this text to be uh, a little bit skinnier like that because this is extending to the full width of the page. Um, this is just a responsive property, kind of a little bonus tip here for you. Um, you can set the max width when the page is stretched. So I can say I only want this to stretch out to 100% of it is of its um, uh, original width, which is 570. You notice that when I've loaded the page here, this is much wider than 570 because uh, my browser window here has a lot more room. So Bubble's responsive engine saying, great, we're going to fill up that extra space as much as possible, but I'm limiting it now. I've checked this box to apply a max width when stretched. I will only allow it to go as wide as its original width. So if I refresh, we're gonna see much different behavior with this text. 
Okay, so you can see now it's a lot skinnier. Um, it needs to be centered and all of that, but um, just a little bonus text responsive tip there for you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And um, if you are looking for more tutorials just like this, please uh, check out my VIP membership. I have over 200 tutorials uh, for uh, doing cool features like this with your bubble apps. There is a link to the VIP membership in the description below. So check that out if you are not already a member. Thanks so much for watching.